Beautiful. So now let's start working on a challenge. I'll comment out the final one in the app JSX, just so it's not in the way. Then we want to navigate to fetch data. And you can either use auto import or you can go basically with import and then those two values. I'll try to use the auto import. I'm going to go with use state. Yep, that's what we're getting from React. And like I said, I'll set it equal to a users and the default value here is going to be an empty array. So I'm going to go with users and then set users. Now that is equal to my use state. And as far as my default value, I'm going to provide empty array. After that, let's set up that use effect. So let's go here and say use effect. Notice we have nice auto import. And I pretty much always start just by logging stuff because I don't want to set up the functionality. And then it turns out that, I don't know, I'm invoking it the wrong way or something along those lines. So I'm going to go here with log and I'm going to say hello. Let's save it. And let me check. Yep. I have nice hello in the console. And again, please, 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 please add over here the empty dependency array. Otherwise, you'll pretty much have to wait to work on the challenge. You'll right away exceed the rate limit. And you'll have to wait, I believe, like 15 minutes or something along those lines. So once we have the use effect, what do we want to do? Well, we want to fetch data from this URL, correct? And like I said, we don't want to set up this function as async because, for example, in my case, I'm going to use async await. So I want to set up the fetching function as async. But we cannot do that with the callback function. That's not allowed. What we can do, though, is to set up a sync function inside. So I'm going to remove the hello and I'm going to come up with a function. I'll call this fetch data is going to be my async function. And I'm not going to provide the URL here. I'm just going to say empty parameters and all that. And I'm going to start by just awaiting for fetch. So response, that is equal to await, and then fetch, and let's provide the URL. Like I said, effectively, this is going to return a promise. And I want to turn this into a JSON. So I'm going to go here with const users, and that is equal to await. And then we want to go with response and then dot and then JSON, like so. We want to save that. And like I said, we just want to start by logging stuff. So in here, I'm going to say users. And if in a console, I'll nicely see the users that are coming from this URL, we're good to go. Now, what's the problem? Well, I'm not invoking it, correct? So I'm going to go here with fetch and then data and check it out. Once I refresh, notice now I have all my users. Now, when it comes to a sync functionality, it's a good practice to set this up in try catch, just in case you have any errors. Now, I can tell you right away that when it comes to fetch, it doesn't treat 404 as an error. So unlike the Axios, which essentially is going to run the code inside of the catch if you have 404, that's not the case with the fetch one. That's kind of a gotcha. So First, let me just cut this one out over here. I'll place this one inside of the try, and I'm just going to log the error. But again, if you'll go here and change the URL, for example, to users, you'll see that basically the error is not going to run. So we'll go here with error, and then again, let me go here with users. And then notice, yes, we do have an error, but it's actually called in line 13. So we're not invoking the catch one over here. Just again, something to keep in mind. Because for example, Axios, if you have 404, yes, then the functionality is going to be invoked in the catch. That's just a tiny side note. So once I have the users, what I can do, well, we can set our users equal to whatever users we're getting back, correct? So why don't we do this? I'm going to go with set users equals to the users. And of course, now I do need to fix the URL. Let's save it over here. And if you want, you can actually go to a big browser and let's test out the state value. So let me navigate to the big browser. I'm going to go with a new tab and all that. And I want to paste that 5173. And if we inspect again, we can take a look at the console if we're logging or we can simply go with components. 
then we have the fetch data and notice I have the use effect. So I have my function and I also have my state value. So if we're successful, this is what we're going to see. We'll have this array of users in the state. And like I said, that's why the React Dev tools are so powerful because you can right away pretty much get the info. Okay, that's good. Now let me remove all these errors and all that. I don't think they're useful. And now let's just worry how we'll render them. So let's navigate to the JSX. And we'll start by setting up the section. So I guess I'm just going to remove this one. There's no need here. So section, then inside of this section, I'm going to go with heading three. And let's just come up with some kind of value. So GitHub and users, let's save that. And then we want to go with an ordered list and actually I already set up the CSS in the CSS file. So if you'll navigate to index CSS, and if you look for users, you'll see that basically there is already some CSS attached to it. And essentially, this is what you can use if you want. Again, the CSS part is really irrelevant. The main point of this challenge was to set up the logic. So let's go here with an ordered list. Let's right away add a class of users. And then inside of that an ordered list, I want to iterate over. So I'm going to go here with users, then I'm going to go with map. So we're mapping over and I'll reference each and every item as a user. Now for now, let's just return the list item with some kind of value. And why I'm doing that because I want to log and show you what is inside of the user. So let's go here with return list item. And I'm just going to say item again, there's going to be a warning. Don't worry about it. And yes, I already have a little bit of CSS over there. But if we log, we should see what properties we have inside of that user. So let me scroll up. I mean, all of them are going to be the same, but I'm going to start with the first one and check it out. So we have the avatar URL. Effectively, this is where we can get the picture. We also have the login that is going to be the user account. And we have HTML URL, which leads back to the profile. And also we have a ID. Why do we need ID? Well, because we have the key, correct? So what we can do, we can pull out those properties. So I can say here const, and then ID, then login, then avatar and underscore URL, HTML underscore URL, and all of that is equal to my user. And then as far as the return, well, now let's provide the key. That's the first thing. So in here we'll go with ID. And then as far as the item, I want to place the image and I want to set up the div. Again, if you don't want to use my CSS, I just suggest adding the inline for the image. Otherwise they're going to be pretty big as far as I remember. So image now for the source, we want to go here with avatar URL. Alternative, I'm just going to provide the login. That's kind of a shortcut in here. And then right after that, we want to go with div. And then inside of the div, we're going to go with heading five, and we'll display the name. So let's go here with login. And then lastly, let's set up that link that navigates back. And if you're interested in the CSS, again, please just reference the index CSS, you'll see, essentially, the styles that I added. They're not that many. So let's go here and let's go for HTML URL. And then inside of the link, let's just say profile. Let's save that. And this is what we should see on the screen. Essentially a list of GitHub users. Hopefully everyone enjoyed the challenge and I'll see you in the next video.